Hello, friends and family. Today I'd like to talk about why birthdays are important to celebrate and what's going to change when we all get the COVID vaccine. I'm Jen, and today and every day we talk about my quest to crush aggressive, diffuse, large B cell lymphoma, DLBCL stage 4. And we're using the REPOC immunotherapy chemotherapy to crush non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Thank you so much for joining me today on the journey. Let's get into it. All right, so no quote today. I did a little Google search. I've been thinking about it. Why is it important to celebrate birthdays? So this was my conclusion. It kind of goes along with yesterday. So birth itself is a celebration, right? And every year thereafter is a blessing. The birth and every year that we accumulate in our life is a blessing to be celebrated. Now, not always. I did In the research I did, there were some cases where uh, I guess it was believed to be pagan to celebrate birthdays, but we've, we've, we've left that behind. <laughs> so that was interesting. So as you may or may not recall from yesterday, my thought here today, today, April 5th, is how did we get from 2000 to 2021 like that. It's like I blinked my eyes and we jumped 21 years. So I would like to wish a happy birthday to my youngest. Happy birthday. <laughs> and to celebrate. Every year is a celebration and a blessing. And to accomplish so much in these 21 years. Obviously, you know, we're very proud of you. But you've worked hard also. You have about a year left in college and you have plans for your future, right? And you've been working hard towards those goals and objectives. So we're proud of you. Good job. I think it's just going back to the celebrating the blessing, celebrating the life. It's just another way to celebrate life, right? We celebrate the birth itself. And then every year thereafter, we're celebrating that life and the accomplishments of the last year. In this last year, I'm sad that... You know, you didn't get the full college experience from the perspective of that you spent the whole semester here, not the whole semester, but the I guess the whole year, two semesters um, here due to COVID. And I'm happy that next semester in the fall that you'll be going back to campus and get to go back to that experience because that's really part of the growing and getting ready to move on and live your life. Not that we're kicking you out. You know, your father wants you to stay forever. <laughs> All right, so my second thought is what is going to change after we've had the vaccine? So I did get my vaccine this morning, and I have to say, so far, my arm's not sore. I have been, like, doing little massages and moving my arm around. These are the tips I heard. I did hear that sometimes when you sleep, it gets a little yucky, but we'll deal with that tonight or tomorrow morning if that's what happens. But what's going to change in my immediate, in my life or Bill's life once we get the vaccine? So Bill's getting his vaccine on Thursday. I've got my vaccine today. I think towards the end of this month, he's getting his second dose and my second dose will be at early May. So back to the question, what's going to change? And I think my answer is really nothing. I will continue to restrict my, restrict going out. Um, I will wear a mask <laughs> always. I will wash my hands constantly <laughs> when, when there's any exposure and just in general, good hygiene. I don't think that I'll be traveling on any type of public transportation anytime in the near future, including planes, trains, and automobiles, only automobiles with limited uh, people in there, obviously the ones we own. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I think overall as a society that the more people that are vaccinated and, you know, the better off we'll be and the less, uh, certainly the less deaths we'll have. But it's not clear to me when you have a compromised immune system and other underlying issues, if just getting the vaccine is enough to totally protect you. I think it protects you from getting so sick that you have to be hospitalized based on the knowledge we have. But I'm still not sure. <laughs> so I, 
I'm I'm happy that we're coming into the nicer months and here on the east coast of the United States and that we'll be able to interact with more people outdoors and safely. But I'm not going to, you know, there was some anxiety today when we spent time with our family because we were indoors. Lots of windows open, fortunately. But, you know, except for when we were eating, we kept our masks on right in the house. And, you know, we did all those types of things to all those protocols to stay safe. Um, and when we ate, we only ate with other people who are fully vaccinated. They've already had their second shots in the hope that, you know, that they don't have enough of the, if they get the disease, they don't have enough to make me sick. Right. So th this is kind of where we're at, but I'm wondering, and maybe you could put your comments down below, what will change in your life once you're vaccinated? Is that your key to just throw that mask off and go lead your life? Or do you continue to have those protocols where you stay six feet apart, where you keep your mask on, where you're care careful about the germs you're exposed to, where you wash your hands regularly, where you don't touch your face and all those types of things. What are your thoughts? I think I'm still going to be pretty much living the same life for a while. That's my thought right now. I'll let you know if I change that. If you, if you think you can convince me to do something else, please let me know. <laughs> all right. So how am I? I'm pretty good today. I'm still not feeling full energy, but otherwise I'm pretty good. I can feel that there's some of the, I don't know if it's, I wouldn't call it anxiety, more anxious or the worry is starting to settle in a little bit, a little bit about the coming week. I know chemo's going to start on Friday. I'm worried how I'm going to handle that if my energy is not restored to its um, previous levels, you know, I'm going to come in a little lower. Um, I will, I haven't been as good about my hydration over the last couple of weeks, so I'm going to really focus for the next several days on keeping my hydration high, higher than I have been. You know, I've been right around 80. I'm going to try to get up to a hundred. Don't think I'm going to make it today. I'm only, <laughs> I think I'm only in the forties or fifties right now. So I got some work to do. <laughs> um, but overall I feel pretty good. You know, some of the conversation today at our gathering was, oh, it's your last treatment. And I, you know, I tried to caution everyone, including myself. <laughs> it's my last treatment contingent on the findings of that next PET scan at the end of May. So yeah, I'm going to get this treatment. And once this poisoning is done next Tuesday, a week from Tuesday, that means no more poisoning until the earliest, <laughs> the end of May, early June, right? So there is, that means there's a fairly significant break, but you know, is that, you know, I'm hesitant to get, um, what's the words I'm looking for? I don't want to put too much stock in the fact that it's my last treatment because if something precipitates the need for more treatment, whatever type that is, I don't want to have it in my mind that I should have been done, if that makes any sense. So I'm just trying to ride, ride it out, but I am grateful and happy that after next Tuesday, I won't have poisonings for a while that I think will help some. All right. So angel deliveries, I'm going to call the yummy leftovers and the time that we got to spend with our family today, our angel delivery. So that was a lovely, we had a lovely afternoon. Thank you. Okay. Doctor news. There was nothing from the doctor's office, but I did get my first shot. I took my Band-Aid off a long time ago because I'm allergic to the adhesive and it gets nasty for me. <laughs> I have more reaction from the adhesive than the, the shot itself. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, no soreness yet. And some, I think in the past when I've had flu shots, when I had a good and strong immune system, I had a lot of soreness. So I suspect I'm not going to see that soreness as from a reaction to the shot perspective because my immune system is so yucky at the moment. However, they, it is an intermuscular shot. So there is the possibility that there's some soreness just because you went into the muscle. So we'll see how that rides. But I suspect we'll see. Fingers crossed. I'm not going to have the level of soreness that some folks talk about. All right. What else do we have here? I think that's all I have for Dr. News. So let's go on to my to-do list today which was um, more significant than I thought it was going to be <laughs> for a Sunday anyway. All right. So ta-da, 
I finished my my shot paperwork. I got my vaccine, and that one pretty uneventful. I got there, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes before my shot time, I'm going to say. They asked me to be there 15, but I just couldn't get my act together. I had already filled out that paperwork, so that saved some time. I signed a piece of paper that said that I, you know, I met the state and CDC's requirements for getting a shot. Um, and then they asked me to wait, and then they called me in a little while later. Um, I'd say my appointment was at 11 a.m., and at 11.07, I remembered... She asked me um, to please stay in the store for 15 minutes. I could walk around if I wanted, but not to leave because they needed to make sure there was no reaction and they had like an EpiPen available in case there was like an anaphylaxis. And if anything started to feel funny, then I should come right back, but just obviously stay in the store. So I haven't been shopping in over a year. <laughs> So I just walked up and down the aisles and kind of stayed away from other people. I was masked, of course, and shopped, window shopped, I guess we'll call it, right? Until my 15 minutes was up, and then I left. So that was fairly uneventful. I was home by 11.40, maybe. So less than an hour out of the house. Like I mentioned, it was right, you know, it was fairly close to the house. And, and they were pretty much on time. So it was a good experience. Let's see. We had family time today, so that was good. Um, I did paint my nails last night. Ta-da. I did keep uh, several nails in my um, Tinkerbell green, lymphoma green. I also put in a pink color and a blue color. It's kind of fun, pink purple. And they do change colors for hot and cold. I took some video, so let me see if I can give you some B-roll here. Uh, let's see. I did hydrate, kind of, getting there, as I mentioned earlier. And I finished my crochet project. I'm wearing it. And I think I included a bigger picture on the thumbnail that you guys can see, I hope. So, I don't know what you think of it, but I, it's pretty. It's got some nice spring colors. And I decided if it's warm... It's getting warmer here. If it's warm on Friday when I go in for my chemo treatment, I'm thinking I might wear this because it has good access for my pick line and everything. Oh, and I did. my sister-in-law mentioned that my pick line looks like it's on the other side when you guys watch this video. So I'm just going to make the comment. I don't know that you care. My pick line is on my left arm. This is my left arm. Um, trying to think. I'm I can't recall what it looks like when I look at it. In any case, it's on my left arm because I have um, limb restrictions on my right because my, there were, they removed more lymph nodes in my right armpit when I had breast surgery than they did on the left. They, they removed lymph nodes on both sides, but there were more lymph nodes removed on the right. So that is why we use my left arm for everything. <laughs> I've been fortunate. I'm knocking on wood there. Um, not to have any lymphedema symptoms since my surgery. I mean, I have some swelling. My body is not particularly happy, but as far as my arms and my body and the rest of my limbs go, I haven't had any issues. Um, so that is all I had on my to-do list today. Let's talk about my to-do list. So to-do must. I must work tomorrow. I must hydrate, as we talked about, and I must put together my porridge plus. Uh, I must lo finish loading the dishwasher and run it. I need to place a grocery order, it's probably tonight. Um, I misordered for the cake stuff, so in discussion today for Sam, I realized I ordered the wrong stuff. So I'm going to reorder some more cake ingredients and bake and decorate a cake tomorrow. Um, and that is all I have on my must-do list. And I think I mentioned already a couple days ago, and maybe even yesterday, that based on my current energy levels, the days that I work, um, it's just not realistic for me to expect a lot of myself physically or, or mentally. And that's why I'm going to keep my to-do must list short during these days when I'm working. So my to-do would love to do is to clean... And I need to do some laundry. So that has to get done this week before I start treatment, I hope. But um, that's my plan right now. 
it doesn't have to be tomorrow so that's why I put it on the would love to do so we'll see if I can get my act together all right I didn't do any charity miles today but charity miles um, the team is still 18 uh, collectively we've moved 1,402 miles great job and this is our team name if you'd like to join us there's also a link down below thank you so much great job so thank you so much for joining today if you're just here for story time we will see you tomorrow thanks for joining okay daily symptoms and statistics Remember, every day is a gift. Live it. See you tomorrow. <laughs>